Okay, so let's go ahead and get this whole process started here. We're in Section 2 of Module 2, Getting Started, and what we're going to do now is talk about creating your company file. Now, each file in QuickBooks is called a company. You can have as many companies as you like. Neither company talks to the other. So some examples might be, if you're a small business owner, you might have your business in one and put your personal in another company file. It could be if you're an accountant, for example, that you have a company file for each one of your customers. But however you'd like to do it, you can have as many company files as you like. Now, each one of the company files you create, you'll have to go through and actually set up that file as a one-time thing. So what you'll notice here on this window is that we currently don't have any company files open. Now if we had some previously we had opened, they would show up in this part of the window here. And we could just double click and open them right up. Here's where we would go to create a new company. Here's where we go to open one that maybe wasn't on this list or to restore. And what restore basically means is we'll be talking about doing backups later on. Occasionally you might have a situation where your company file in QuickBooks on your computer has an issue and maybe you need to restore one of those backups. This would be where you go to do that. And then notice the sample files that QuickBooks has. There is a sample product based and a sample service based and if you have other additions other than QuickBooks Pro you may have some other sample files as well. But these are great places to go and look and see how they did it. So if you don't know how to do something, go and see how the sample file set it up or how they did that. But let's start by creating a new company. Okay, a couple quick things here. You'll notice there's a couple ways you can go with this. You can actually use an Express Start, which they say is recommended for new users. The reason they recommend it is because it doesn't ask you a whole lot of questions just a few things and it sets your file up for you but you still have a lot of work to go and set it up the way you would like it so I really suggest you use the advanced setup which we're going to do here in a second I wanted to point out also these other options here it could be that you have Quicken and you want to convert that data over into QuickBooks it could be you have some other type of accounting software so just notice that you can import some of that data into QuickBooks so let's go ahead and start with this advanced setup and this will launch us into what we call the easy step interview. Now remember this is a one-time thing that you're going to do for each company that you create. And it's going to take you a few minutes to get through it, but once you get through it you'll be glad that you did set it up this way. Now a couple things just to know as we go through the interview. You can change anything. So if I go through this and I put in the company name, for example, and I misspell it, well, I can always go and change it. So it's very user friendly in that respect. Also, be careful about hitting the Enter key at this point because Enter is the same thing as hitting Next. So we'll talk about turning that feature off once we get inside our company file. Now, on this screen where it says Enter your company information, notice the only thing you have to have is the company name. It's the only thing with the star next to it. However, if you're going to send out correspondence, for example, you're going to send letters to customers, emails, things like that, you probably do want to put this information in because this is where QuickBooks will pull from. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pick a company name here. All right, we'll say it's JB Publishing. And notice when I hit the tab key, it brings down that same name. So unless it happens to be different on legal documents, you don't need to change it. The next field, ask for your tax ID. Now, QuickBooks only needs this for a few things. For example, if you decide later that you'd like to use the Intuit's payroll service, then it would need your tax ID for a few things like that. But if you're not going to be using that, you probably don't even need to put this in here. So you can either put zeros or you can just leave it blank and it will still accept it. Okay, you want to put in a street address, so we'll just put in 123 Oak Street. And let's say this is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the zip in. This is the country, the United States, but notice that I could be in some of these other countries that you see listed here. There is a place for the phone number, the fax, the email, and the website.
So again, you'd want to fill those in. Okay, I'm going to click Next at the bottom, and now it asks me to select my industry. Now keep in mind when you're looking down this list, there is no wrong answer here, but try to pick something close to what your business does. Now the reason it's asking you to pick an industry is because based on how you answer the questions and which industry you choose, it's going to create a generic chart of accounts for you a little further down the line. So let's look down the list here. So we've got a publishing company. So let's just say in this particular case, you can see there's all types of industries. I'll go to the bottom and pick a general service-based business. And I'll click Next. Now this screen asks, how is your company organized? Now notice it's got the sole proprietor option, it's got an LLC, an S-Corp. Don't get hung up on this screen. The reason it's asking you which one of these you are is because if you plan to do your own taxes and you're going to use some sort of software like TurboTax, for example, it will need to know what line to pull items onto in the tax form. Now if you have an accountant that does your taxes, pick other or none because if you pick one of these other options, every screen that you enter is going to have an option that says which tax line would you like this to go on on your tax form. And you're not going to have a clue and you'll get hung up on that. So just pick other or none and that way you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to click next at the bottom and it says select the first month of your fiscal year. And it's going to default to January unless yours happens to be different. Okay, let me explain why it's asking you about this. We're going to be talking in Module 3 a little bit about working with users. Right now, if your company file was set up, you would just open QuickBooks, open your company file, and just start working. But you do have the ability to set it up so that when you open the company file, the user has to type in their username and their password in order to get in. Now, some reasons you would want to do this is, number one, if you want to limit an employee's access to certain areas of the program, you can do that by setting up the users. You can also track when changes are made, who made the change, what it used to be, what it is now. The administrator is one of the five users that you can have in QuickBooks. This is asking if you'd like to set up the administrator password. Now, I would definitely do this in real life. It's highly recommended. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and click Next and get past that, and then like I said, we'll talk about the users a little bit later. Now it says it's going to create my company file. So I'm going to click Next, and this is like your Save screen. So all you have to do on this screen is, if you like the name that it gives it, just go ahead and hit Save, and then notice it's actually going to set up your file for you. So you're going to see in the background here in a few moments, your title bar appears with the company name, and then you'll see the home screen appear and things like that. Okay? Okay, so now if I did happen to hit this leave here, at least my company file is set up to this point, and I can pick up where I left off. Alright, so let's go ahead and click Next and talk a little bit about customizing. This screen asks, what do you sell? Services, products, or both? So let's say that I only sell services right now and then later I decide to add products, I can certainly come and change this. I'll click next at the bottom and then it asks, do you charge sales tax? So if your business does charge sales tax to its customers, then you'd want to choose yes on this particular screen. Now it's not going to ask us which tax or all of that stuff at this point. Right now all we're doing is turning options on or off on our home screen. So I'll go ahead and click Next, and then it asks if I'd like to create estimates. Now a good example of an estimate would be construction. If I wanted to have my kitchen remodeled, I'd probably ask the construction company to give me a quote or an estimate first. And that's what this allows you to do. So if you're in that business and you want to create quotes, you would say yes. I'm going to click Next, and now it asks about using statements. Now basically a statement goes out at the end of the month and it lists each thing that happened on the customer's account. Whether you had an invoice, they made a payment, you issued a credit, it's just a history of everything that happened that month. Again, it's optional for your business. Okay, progress invoicing. Now if I were actually setting this up, I would have put this question right behind the estimate question. Because here's what progress invoicing does. It allows you to take an estimate 
an invoice for portions of that estimate. I might invoice for 30 percent, I might invoice for specific items on that estimate, but definitely if you're estimating jobs you'll want to use progress invoicing. The next thing it asks is about managing the bills that you owe. Bills come in the mail that you have to pay. There are some people that actually take the bills and they put them on a basket on their desk and Friday comes and they start going through the stack and seeing which ones they want to pay. Well that would certainly work, but the way QuickBooks is designed is designed so that when you get the bill out of the mail, you stick it in QuickBooks and that way you can run reports to see who you owe, how much you owe, and, and things like that. I'm going to click Next. Managing Time. If you're in a business where you track time that you spend on a particular project, then you'll want to turn this on. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Do you have employees? Again, we're just turning the options on in case we'd like to do payroll a little bit later. Now let me just mention one thing. This is very misleading right here. 1099 contractors are not employees. They're considered vendors in QuickBooks. I'm going to click Next again, and now it says Using Accounts in QuickBooks. So we're going to stop the video right here because we've got a few more minutes we need to go on this particular section. So let's go over to Part 2, and then we'll finish this up.